Just as a quick disclaimer, I'm not trying to throw shade at many of, or not at any of the people that are talked about in here, any of the celebrities, in case someone tries to get up in arms about it. So just so you know, this is the disclaimer. Enjoy the video. Hello, YouTube and all of that. Name's Jason from Sisu Studios and happy Black History Month, y'all. So I think every week, or at least I'm going to try for every week, every week I'm going to make a video about something related to black film because we don't nearly get enough conversation surrounding black film and I will like that to change. I think everybody will like that to change. So we're going to talk about it right now. Well, we're going to talk about a subject about it right now. So this video is kind of a follow up to my previous video about the Oscar nominations. I mentioned about the lack of to black talent that was in the acting categories for the past year and for this year as well even though we got great performances all around and we got Angela Bassett and Brian Tyree Henry nominated for Oscars there's the only two black people in there and no one for best actress they're all supporting if you would like to watch my other video to kind of get caught up on the conversation then go ahead and do that before coming over here i'm going to talk about the hashtag oscar so white movement and kind of why it still applies this year especially with recent news about one of the nominations coming out this year so this concept this talk about the academy's racist leanings has been around since about 2015 when activist april reigned tweeted and coined the Oscar so white hashtag of course you know like most people on Twitter you know it's a little jockey joke but it's also kind of a way to signify to the public that is like there's something off going on here it was definitely a response to the lack of racial representation and typically systemic discrimination of BIPOC, especially black actors in these acting spaces, in the award space. Kind of like, it's kind of the same in almost every award, especially like when it comes to Golden Globes, SAG Awards, and all of the other big awards that kind of lean towards what Oscar nominations are going to be like. So it's been around for a while. For the 2016 Academy Awards in years prior, especially in 2015, there was a noticeable lack of any people of color in the acting nominations and only Blip of Color being best original song category. And I know that Inuritu who won twice for best picture, but, and I'm not trying to erase his Mexican heritage, but at the same time, when you look at him, he kind of comes off as white, like Guillermo del Toro. So my point still kind of stands on this. So this is Eddie and Jay from the future. That was like the only inkling of black talent that even got recognized that night in 2015. In 2016, it wasn't even that case, considering there's essentially nothing from people of color. Nothing with those couple of years. Granted, I'm pretty sure um, that was one of the years that Moonlight won, but at the same time, actually no, that was, 20, that was the year after. But in 2015, 2016, there was really not much in terms of you know, black and brown people being nominated or even being recognized uh, in those acting nominations. And if you want to be real, not even the technical nomination. We as black filmmakers, we, we've been craving proper recognition and acceptance from the film circuit 
and academy circuits for years now and while we don't necessarily like need we don't really like need all of the you know the validation the academy is supposed to be the pinnacle of motion picture achievement so do you think that there'd be tried to be more inclusive and open in our nominations especially for the general categories in 2020 the academy announced an initiative to push for more inclusion in the best picture category by 2025 as a part of its academy aperture 2025 initiative specifically mentioning the 2024 oscars with starting with an updated list of standards including on-screen representation creative leadership industry access and opportunities and audience development these standards on um, paper are supposed to push for more racial gender and sexuality representation in front of and behind the camera so this looks like it would be a great opportunity for underrepresented and <clears throat> marginalized communities to be recognized for their efforts in the film industry right however all the other categories will be subject to the current standards which means they won't follow the same standards they've been are trying to establish for the general categories and best picture I do feel like that's problematic in that case because of the fact that the Academy is just trying to be performative in its inclusivity and diversity. It should also be noted that the Academy tends to skew more old, more male, more white. According to Statista for 22, approximately 81% of the voting members identified as white, with non-whites being 19%. Also, 67% were men. On top of that, there's a distinct lack of younger people. Or when I mean younger people, I mean about 30 years old or below. Granted, there are some efforts. They invited Quavangene Wallace, Beast of the Southern Wilds fame in 2020. And on top of that, as well as uh, Haley Steinfeld of True Grit and now Hawkeye fame. And Brie Larson of Room of which I think she was nominated for in 2015 and Captain Marvel fame. There is a lot of work to do in terms of having representation from the inside out, especially from within the Academy. This is after the push for more inclusiveness in the voting pool in 2020. And the Academy has supposedly surpassed its goal of inclusion, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Let me remind you that over 9,500 people are eligible to vote, and there are 10,000 people that are members of the Academy in general. This year in particular is interesting because of the fact that we have possibly the biggest pool of first-time nominations in recent memory, while another arguable pool of people of color it's, isn't that impressive on times of the Academy. There's only a handful of people of color nominated for all the acting categories and only two black nominees in the form of Angela Bassett and Brian Tyree Henry. Mind you, these are in the supporting actor categories. Halle Berry is still the only black woman to win Best Actress today. Like I said before, many films of black talent behind and in front of the camera have basically been shut out of the awards almost completely. The most surprising snubs being Till and The Woman King. Black women were the forefront of the awards movies and all of it got shut out. Despite the critical and financial acclaim these movies received, it's surprising but not surprising. Now we have Danielle Deadweiler, Janelle Monet, Viola Davis, so many people. Hell, even Letitia Wright. All of these actresses have gotten so many awards from everywhere else, but has gone completely shut out of the main Academy Awards nominations. This kind of leads me to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> so Andrea Riseborough has been subject to a good bit of, you can say, controversy as of late for her uh, acting nomination for To Leslie. Granted, no one has heard of To Leslie up until that Tuesday 
when the nominations were announced. This is kind of why I feel like the Oscar So White movement is still persistent because there is there has been reported to be an active case of I'm not gonna say meddling, but it's been reported that this campaigning for two Leslie, which seemingly come out of nowhere, has come from a lot of Hollywood nepotism and, you know, white people so poor now white people. It's kind of like that. Two Leslie only grows $27,000, but it does have a 98% Rotten Tomatoes ratings from 57, you know, 57 reviews. So maybe it's warranted. Maybe. I feel like the reason that Oscar So White still persists is because of the existence of this specific nomination and the controversy and weirdness surrounding it because this nomination mm, I'm going to say that it's weird because there was no talk of this movie being anywhere near these spaces in Hollywood that the films like Glass Onion till um of course you know stuff like Triangle Sadness Women Talking uh Woman King, The Northman, like all of those movies were all, all in talks at some point of being part of the part of the Academy in terms of nominations. They were all Oscar forerunners at some point in time. This weird push for the film that felt like it was very last minute is weird because of the fact that this small subset of Hollywood basically campaigned from the inside out a film that probably would not have gotten any anything else any day of the week otherwise but yet here we are a one single nomination for one of the biggest categories the weirdness of this nomination in the leading role is has been subject to controversy because of this weird push from people like Kate Blanchett, these weird screenings that the film has shown from CAA and from other people like Demi Moore, uh, Shalise Theron, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kate Winslet. And granted, I'm pretty sure that I think Octavia Spencer has done one, but no one's really talked about that. So I'm going to keep her out of this. But all of these other big names in Hollywood, especially Kate Blanchett, have pushed for a film that probably would not have gotten any other day of the week. And essentially also because of the campaigning that's happened behind the Academy's backs from the director and his wife, from the director Michael Morris and his wife, I think Mary McCormick whatever their grassroots you can say campaigning essentially broke rules in the academy and landed and I'm not going to say undeserved nomination but definitely not did not follow the right protocols in order for it to be nominated the academy is supposed to be investigating it but i'm not sure if that's going to actually do anything because as we all know the academy has done virtually nothing for worse people but that has yet has done more for less so it's kind of weird so We'll see what happens if the Academy investigates this situation, but I honestly do not think that anything is going to come out of it, unfortunately, as most things, as the Academy has decided not to repeal Andrea Riseborough's Best Actress nomination for To Leslie. It goes to show that I was proven correct. They're not going to do anything, even if the rules are broken, of course. But this also goes to show that black filmmakers, we, as much as we work to be able to be on the same level 
as these people that are nominated for best director, best actor, best whatever. We do not have any power and we don't have any clout and we don't have any pull in the industry like you think we do. And it's kind of sad. Granted, like I said, we don't really need the validation, but we definitely deserve some form of recognition in the same vein as all of these other directors, all of these other filmmakers, all of these other actors deserve. I hope that if there's more information, I'll be able to talk about it more. But as far as that goes, I think that's going to be it for this video. So if you have any questions, please comment below. What do you think of the nominations for the year? Do you think the Oscars are still racist? Spoiler alert, yes. <laughs> do you believe that, you know, black filmmakers, black actors deserve the same respect as these white counterparts? Spoiler alert, yes. So yeah, comment below. Uh, of course, please like, subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, look at my backlog i have more film reviews more topics about the film industry and i'm working on more videos talking about the black experience in terms of film and this month for black history month and i hope to see y'all around some more so have a nice day